Hi everybody, welcome uh, to our goalkeeping webinar around making the most of training. Um, if you've if you've not been on one of these before, welcome to, to, to it. This is uh, my first experience of a webinar, so um, go easy on me and uh, expect some hiccups. Uh, this is actually a, um, a webinar that we ran last week. Um, the webinar didn't actually record itself, so we've we've agreed to uh, sit on the computer again and go back through uh, the contents of what we discussed and, and what was delivered. Um, how that makes it slightly different is um, the evening when we delivered the webinar, there was some input externally, people sending some questions in. Obviously, we're not going to have that this time, but what I'll do, I'll try and refer to some of the questions that were asked along the way. And I've also I've also got someone sat with me um, who, who potentially is going to throw some questions in as well. So hopefully there'll be a little bit of interaction. Um, there will be some tasks you to do. So we'll pause the webinar as we go along and restart it. So you guys get a chance to do some tasks. Um, and hopefully it's beneficial. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll go from go from there. So, so firstly, for the next hour, or, or for the next, yeah, for the next hour, um, we're hopefully going to have a look into um, a bit of detail around around some practice design. Uh, we're definitely going to get a little bit more, um, a little bit more geeky, so to speak, around some of the goalkeeping bits. Hopefully, have a laugh. Um, I did get a laugh the other night. It's going to be tough with no one else on the other end of the line, but we'll see. Um, hopefully, it leaves you thinking uh, with that little thinking emoji there around what this might mean to you in your environment. Uh, I'm sure we've got coaches from all, all uh, you know, full spectrum from grassroots through to to um, to professional football, uh, from from young kids all the way up to up to uh, adults. So hopefully you can you can work out what this means to you, uh, and hopefully take some notes, take some stuff away, and maybe apply it to your um, to your environment. So um, yeah, let's see where we are in one hour's time. Um, so first thing. First thing that's important to do is is kind of kind of share with you where all this comes from. Um, I think it'd be really easy just to run off into a load of a load of documents and a load of ideas and stuff, but just just to bring this all back to to where it began really. So we put together a goalkeeping DNA about four about five years ago now, um, and 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 basically everything we do kind of falls out of that or or works back towards it. So we we kind of start with the end in mind. Um, so, so the first thing, you know, as an organisation at the FA, you know, we, uh, you know, our ultimate goal is to, you know, unite the game and inspire the nation. Um, I think if you think back to, you know, how that how that's been done with the with the male senior team and the female senior team, um, I think the, you know, the the way the teams have played, uh, how they relate to uh, the game, to young players, how they influence in the game, were definitely some way to achieving that. Uh, the, the, the two bits we're on tonight is around England teams being ready to win, and the second bit is around having a, a world-leading education program. Um, you know, the, the five things that fall out of that for us as national coaches is is one how we play, so having an idea of how we want the team and the goalkeeper to play. The second thing is is what we call development plans for international players. That that basically means you know every touch point you have with a player, whether that be a text message, a phone call. Uh, you know, a coaching session, a one-to-one, um, -one, every, every kind of touch point and, and different ways of developing players. Uh, the middle one is around some some positional characteristics of a goalkeeper, uh, a project that we did to um, to establish the kind of important things for us, what we were looking for from a player's point of view. Uh, some stuff around coach development. Um, so we're always developing as coaches, you know, myself included and, and everyone in the game should be wondering and curious about how they develop themselves. And then the last one is around how we identify talent. And then every morning when we get out of bed as a goalkeeping staff, we want to ask ourselves, you know, how are we unearthing, inspiring and empowering, you know, future generations of England coaches and goalkeepers, um, how we go about doing that. So the area we're going to look at um, mostly tonight is probably going to be coach development around how we're developing ourselves as uh, as coaches in in our own environment, and secondly, around how we work with the players. Uh, so they're probably the, that, that, that's where we're shining the light this evening. Um, as a, as a, as I mentioned a minute ago, we went through a, a really lengthy process of putting together this player profile. So this is this is our, our goalkeeper uh, characteristics, the the things that we look for from all of our goalkeepers at all ages. Um, 
you know, from from all from all different all different parts of the game. This took us this took us about nine months to put together. And um, we started off with a small group of people piecing together the project. We then expanded it uh, to other sports. To um, uh, we, we took it to different sports. We took it to different um, organisations. We took it to different lines of work. It wasn't just all sports. We took it to ex players. Took it to current players. Took it to managers. And we had loads of input on on how we we got to this stage. Um, so these these characteristics that are listed are, uh, you know, aspirational characteristics of what we're looking for in players at any at any age. So you can you can be this at any age. This isn't li- this isn't linked or just to one age or to a senior player. Um, it's linked to all ages as, as young as young as you want to go. Um, the tactical box sits in the middle. Um, the reason for that is, you know, all the behaviours and characteristics that fall out of the tactical bit, which is the game. Um, the tactical bit informs um, informs how how any given sport behaves. Um, so, an example of that would be a tactic in tennis uh, is around where you must stand when you serve the ball. That means you've got to be a certain uh, you've got to throw the ball at a certain height to uh, hit it over the fence and stuff. So. Uh, the fence, the net. Uh, there's the first laugh tonight. Um, tactically, um, how the game is played and the rules of the game inform everything we do from a, a sight point of view, physically, technically, and, and socially. Um, so you, you've you've probably all got a, a part of that that you um, that you lean towards more strongly. Uh, we all favour different parts um, a lot more closely. I, I speak to a lot of people who really value the psychological corner. And I see some great work of, of, that people do psychologically to motivate players. Um, I think, I think as goalkeeping coaches, we we probably overcoach in the technical corner. We we kind of look for the the right technique or the right action all the time, um, which is great. But do we spend too much time in there? Um, physically is a real real key one for a keeper. I think if you look at all the. Um, you know the, the goalkeepers in the Premier League, and you know your favourite goalkeepers. They've all probably got a unique characteristic that makes them special. Um, personally, my favourite one is, is the middle one, the tactical one. I'm, I'm really key on our goalkeepers being proactive when they haven't got the ball. Um, you know, denying denying goal scoring opportunities through their, their decisions, their positions, um, and then exploiting space when they've got it. So what that means is, you know, the space, depending where the opposition are, might be five yards away or it might be 50, but, you know, helping goalkeepers recognise where that space is. So that would be my preference, and I'm sure you've got yours as well. So hopefully we're going to reference back some of these some of these this evening. Um, look, having a bit of a game model has been, has been really important to us. So we picked out, you know, three moments or four moments in the game that we think the goalkeepers are in. One of them is when they've got the ball, so when their team are in possession. Um, then when their team hasn't got possession, when the opposition has got it. Uh, and in between both of them moments, you're taking up different positions to support the play, whether you're offering for a back pass or whether you're preparing yourself to come and defend the space and you know sweep up the ball. Um, so uh, a lot of you will have seen this, but th- this map, this pitch map, has been, has been really key for us, really, really useful. Um, so basically, uh, what we're saying is support is always happening. So you're always in the optimum position to support play. Um, and then when you've got the ball, um, you play in one of um, five passes. Um, this Some people think this is like a, a team strategy or a team model of how you play. And some of you are probably sat there thinking, oh, well, my team talk about uh, defending or attacking through the thirds or first line passes, second line passes. Um, maybe playing in lanes. I know people playing five lanes, which are horizontally, or sorry, vertically through the pitch. Um, this isn't a game model. This is an individual's um, how they play a pass. So the ball is at the feet of the goalkeeper. How they play that pass to a certain area of the pitch, it either goes around the opposition, it goes through them, it goes into them, it goes onto them, or it goes beyond them. So this isn't a team. This isn't a team setup. This is an individual setup of how a player plays his or her passes. Um, when we first started this, I wasn't too sure how it was going to go down. Um, and then the players who I first shared it with, literally the session, the session to under twenty-one players. The session afterwards, 
they were already referring to some of the types of pass they were playing. And, and I thought they were having me on, but um, it really has become a, a real good, a useful tool for us. One, when helping, you know, coach and support players, but, but secondly, when measuring how, how well we perform. Um, the flip side of that is when we haven't got the ball. Um, what I'm going to show you now is a real simplistic version of, of, of an out-of-possession model or uh, when you've not got the ball. Uh, when, when this has been done in the past or when I've done this in the past, and I'm sure some of you have, and you talk about how you want people to play or, you know, out of possession when they've not got the ball, you end up with a list as long as you're arm. You end up with, like, handling and diving and short diving and medium diving and high diving and uh, diving at feet and then smother it. You end up with a really long list. So we went more on an outcome-based an outcome based approach where we said, right, um, goalkeeper are taking up a support position, um, ready to make the right decisions from a support position. Uh, and then they make decisions based on whether they defend the space, which is between themselves and the back four or back five. Um, how they defend the area. So, you know, how do they deal with balls played um, into the area or across the area? And then obviously most importantly is how they defend the goal. Um, we didn't want to we didn't want to list a whole load of actions or techniques which which stipulated exactly how to do it and, and imply that there's only one way. Um, we wanted goalkeepers to bring to bring their unique identity to the game and um, and be able to play the game how they how they you know best suits their setup. So um, yeah, that's how we came up with that model and it's a real simple one. I think it can be followed by real real young young kids and novices in the game. Uh, when they first start playing, all the way up to the, you know, your favourite players in the Premiership. I think you can probably relate to, to some of it there. Um, just moving on to, you know, what we're gonna what we're gonna touch on tonight. Um, hopefully, provided a little bit of an intro as right of regard to what we're gonna talk through. Um, I want I'd like to talk about uh, establishing outcomes in sessions. So you know, being clear around what type of session you're putting on and. Uh, is your content hitting you know what you want the outcome to be um we'll then go on to uh, go on to talk about a bit of a practice design framework um around like maybe some considerations for you to think when you're designing your practices um, we'll then have a look at some examples of that in practice um got a few tasks to do in that section and then we'll uh they'll, we'll have a bit of a review and a reflect or regards you know what this means to you and, and, and what you're going to do next with it Okay, so establishing outcomes. This is um, sorry, just going to flip back from that. This is something that I'm probably quite big on. Um, I'm just going to have to flip back through these. I didn't realise it had disappeared. Um, this is something I'm quite big on. Whenever you whenever you go into a situation, uh, a meeting, into a training session, into a presentation, into a conversation, um, I think it's really important to be clear what you're trying to get out uh, of the of the of the, of the content that you're going to deliver. And, you know, I'd ask you to reference back what I've done tonight. I've started the presentation with what I'd like to get out of it. Um, so I think I think with our sessions, sometimes we can go into them and, and not, not be clear exactly what's going to come out the other end of it. So uh, hopefully we're going to touch on some of that stuff that stuff tonight. And, and also, if, if you're clear on what you're going to get out of it, uh, you're able to reflect and review better on whether you achieve that. So um, let's see how we go. So uh, I'm going to press pause after this uh, just to give you, um, or, or you guys can press pause. Um, I'm going to give you a task. I'm going to give you probably three minutes. Yeah, maybe th yeah, three or four minutes to have a look at this. So what are, the, what are the key considerations you make when you're designing a training session? So uh, let me put you in a scenario. You've got a session tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon. Um, you're putting together a bit of a plan for it so you know what you're doing, when to turn up. What are the, the key things that you think of when you're designing this session? Okay, I'll give you four minutes. Go. Okay, Brill. So hopefully you've had um, enough time or you've given yourself enough time to jot down some things. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to share with you uh, some, some things that I've, I've done recently. So uh, these answers have come from um, grassroots coaches uh, right the way up to Premier League co coaches and actually a league player. Um, that I was lucky enough to kind of run some stuff through on this as well. So um, some things that you, you may consider when you're designing a session. So some people talk about the opposition. So straight away, they're thinking about how 
um, the net, the team they play next are going to play. So if the team they play next take loads of shots from outside the area, that might have an influence on your um, on your practice design. If the team you play next uh, pressure really high when you've got the ball, that means that you might want to put your goalkeepers under a bit more pressure in possession. Um, so the opposition may affect how you design your session. Um, individual needs. So um, you might have four goalkeepers in your session. Um, you know, how do you cater your contents for the four individuals who might all be different sizes, uh, be different uh, genders? Uh, they might have different physical profiles in terms of speed or agility or movement. Um, they might, uh, one might be really good at uh, passing it, one might be really poor at passing it. And all them different balancing acts you're trying to, to uh, you know, um, cater for in your session. How do you get the most out of the session for what the individual needs? Um, thirdly, load. Um, probably more based, no, I think it's probably based, at, it's probably more heavily looked at in a professional environment. Um, but load is, is definitely something to think about as regards, you know, how many reps you're giving uh, the goalkeepers, how long each rep lasts. Uh, how long do you want the, the, the boys or girls to be stood in a queue waiting for a go? I would suggest not very long. You know, the more chance they get 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 time to take part, the better. Um, so definitely consideration on, on load and, and what that leaves on the player physically. Uh, time, you know, you need to know how long you've got. You know, do you need to do you need to maximise the twenty minutes you've got, or have you got an hour and a half where you can? you know, really uh, methodically work through the session and spend plenty of time on all, all different parts. Um, so key to know your time. And probably on that one as well would be, um, have, you got a, have you got a plan or a trick up your sleeve uh, if your time gets cut short or if your time gets extended and you have to put something else on? Um, I think the goalkeepers would be expecting you to come up with something if that, if that happened. Um, Periodisation. So, you know, I think what that means is, what part of the week are you on? Uh, what part of the month are you on? Have you got a plan? You know, uh, people talk about micro, macro, and I think there's another one, cycles around um, around working on different um, different parts of the game at different parts of the season. So you might have a real real methodical plan across the whole 12 months or nine months and, you know, what stage are you at and what you're working on that during that time. And, and you could probably fit load into that as well. Um, what are the outfield doing? So, you know, are, are the goalkeepers you're working with going in with the outfield group before, during or after the session? And is there a link? So when they go over, um, is, there a, is there a clear link between what you've been doing and what they're going to be doing? Um, if there is, great. If there's not, is that a problem or, or isn't it? Um, we want our goalkeepers to be adaptable and be able to deal with variety of scenarios. So, you know, is it is it always good to give them like a, a logical linear link into everything they do? I would suggest not. It's probably a good ch good chance to, ch to check out their uh, adaptability and coping strategies. Uh, space and area. Um, so some of us are blessed um, with space. Uh, they get the, the choice of how much they want. Uh, they get the choice of you know whether they've got a goal area or space set out. And then I think I think all of us probably watching this or thinking about this uh, would have would have experienced a scenario where they haven't got that much space. Um, I think that happened. Well, I don't think I know that happens at every level. You know, it'd be nice to think that you always get the perfect scenario and you always get exactly what you want. But there'll be times when you travel to different countries, or there's been bad weather, or there's a problem with the with the training ground, and you have to you have to come up. You have to be adaptable on the spot and come up with um come up with a way of uh come up with a way of you know designing a real um creative session in a, in a smaller space or maybe even in the classroom or on a in a gym so definitely how you know how you can get through that uh competition so you know how do you put com competition onto a session do you put competition on with a scoring system do you have a winner and a loser uh, is it competitive um and, and should should competition be included in goalkeeping sessions so all of these things, and there's, there's probably some that I've missed, you're probably weighing up and having a think around, you know, what this means to you and whether your sessions look like this. Um, okay, so I guess the, the real skill, Tim, is to, to link all them concepts together and 
and sort of embed it within your, your training session. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there is, and I think there probably the probably different parts of the week or different stages during the season where you might focus, you know, a little bit more heavily on certain parts. Um, what I would say is, you know, the the um, how many things are on the screen? Three, five, the eight, the eight things on the screen probably influence what you're doing during your session. Uh, and and I think being aware of of all all aspects is probably important. And it'd be up to you, you know, how much light you, sh you shone on any, any given part during your session. So, yeah, good question. Okay, before we move on, uh, the next thing I'd like to do is 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 take yourself back to when you were a player, um, or imagine yourself as a player, um, or maybe you are still a player. What what are the key things you'd want from a training session as a player? Um, so again, think back. What would you value most in your session as a goalkeeper? And I'll give you. I'll give you another four minutes to do this. So hit pause, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. Cool. Yeah. Okay, Brill. So hopefully you've had a, a crack at what that would look like for you. Um, again, I'm just going to share some things. Like I said, I've done this with some young goalkeepers. I've done it with some goalkeepers in the England uh, system, and I've also done it with, actually done it with a Premier League keeper last week who, who who chucked a few ideas at us as well. So. Um, here's some things that you know they might they might think about. So one would be correction. So something might have gone wrong in the previous game. You know they might not have got their receiving skills right, or the positioning was off for a certain type of cross. So picking up and correcting some things that happened in in previous games or training sessions. Uh, definitely, I've written the word psych, and what that actually means is is psychologically being stressed during the session so being being tested mentally uh you know the session not being too easy there being a bit of a psych challenge around it to to motivate them as as players um realism so they, they said they like it when it looks like the game when it's as realistic as possible uh, i guess that means when they're having to make decisions and and uh, impact situations in their you know unique way um that means what's in it for me uh, so, you know, from a selfish point of view, we all go into a training session or into a development situation and we want to know what we're getting out of it. Um, so, you know, selfishly, how are you how are you adding value to each goalkeeper in your session? Um, they want it to be fun. Um, I guess that links into the, um, into the competition one. You know, how do you make your sessions fun? Is it, is it your character? Is it the games that you put on? Is it scoring systems? Um, is it the clever designs you put on the practices? That, you know, how do you make it fun? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure many people go and take part in sessions. Uh, you know, young kids leave the house and say, oh, I can't wait to go to this session and, and wait in a line for my go. I think most of them go there and, and look forward to like the, the fun parts of the games and the the real, the real creative bits that they're involved in, and the last one is is two way, and and what that means um, is the players would like to have a say in the session. They'd like to have an input into how the how the practices are designed, uh, into maybe putting some rules in, maybe giving some feedback, basically having a say and, and a two way discussion with the coach. Um, so what I'd ask you to do now is you've you've got two you've got two lines of notes or two or two two sections of notes. One's from a coach's point of view, one's from a player. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit pause again in a minute. But what I'd like you to do is just try and match up where the two where the, the two uh, the, the two um, the two sets of notes um, align. So fun and competition may align. Um, Correction and individual needs may align. Um, see where you can get the two to match to whether your sessions are aligned with your, your goalkeepers. Okay, give you two minutes to do that. Okay, welcome back. Um, hopefully you've, you've matched a few up. If not, don't worry. At the end of it, you will be able to. So next section we're going to look at is, is having a bit of a framework for this uh, practice design. So um, where this came about, um, we're really fortunate here at the FA that we've got some really talented coaches working with our England players, both male, female, and other formats. Um, and part of my role was to, it is to, and was to um, recruit and employ these people. 
So we've got we've got a team of of vastly um, or real dynamic uh, team of people from from various ages, uh, various backgrounds, different experiences, different countries, um, a whole kind of melting pot of of skill set. Um, and, and my role was to make sure that we all coached in an, in an aligned fashion. Um, something that I wasn't comfortable with was kind of handing out, you know, self or, or design sessions from myself and telling them to deliver it. I don't think that's one, the best thing to do or two, uh, you know, it's definitely not motivational uh, to, to the people who would be on the receiving end. So how we went about this, we, we, we went about designing some, uh, some, some kind of outcomes or some, areas to consider when you were designing the session and basically if we if we were all going after the same you know kind of topic in the session or the same outcome in the session how how you reach that topic is up to you as an individual um so i had to be comfortable with allowing people to maybe make sessions realistic but do it in their way using their experience and their knowledge not not how i wanted it done so so this is what we came up with so we identified four areas um, that we ask people to consider when delivering a session. Um, so the first area is performance and development. So are you are you focusing on that instant performance of, of the player or are you developing them or maybe a bit of both? Um, what's the emotional outcome of the session? So when the player leaves the session or during the session, how do you want them to feel? Um, what emotions do you want them to have? Um, some stuff on practice spectrum around... Um, around, uh, well, you'll see that in a minute, and some stuff on the three R's, which I'll go into some detail on as well. So just looking up at the top left, in the performance and development section, uh, we look at three areas. Are you working um, Are you working with the individual? Um, so that IDP bit, are you working around the individual needs? Are you looking at the opposition? So are you thinking about how, how Spain play or how Germany play or whoever your opposition would be? Or are you looking at how we play? Are you looking at your own team style of play or your own, you know, your goalkeeping style of play? Um, which one of them are you working on? Second, around the emotional outcome, what are you doing to empower the players um, before the session and during the session? Um, what are you doing to inspire them, again, before the session and during the session? And, and my favourite one is what are you doing to expose them? So what conditions and constraints provide greater challenges than the game. Um, now, everyone would everyone would do these in a different way. Um, I think empowering someone might involve um, using their knowledge to design certain parts of the session, maybe showing them some video beforehand, asking them their opinion on certain situations. So really engaging with them to, to get the most out of the topic. Uh, inspiring one's an interesting one. Um, if you think of traditional goalkeeping coaching or think of yourself when you're coaching, you know, how, how often is it your voice and your energy that's driving the session? And if, if the answer to that is most of the time or all of the time, you know, ask yourself, is, is that right? You know, should the players have, you know, w should, should they be able to, to drive their own performance and drive their own standards? Or, or should it need you and your voice and your energy to do that? And, you know, I'm not saying don't drive performance or don't inspire, but, you know, should it be all the time or should there be, should we allow space in our sessions for, for players to self-motivate and, and drive themselves and each other's? And like I mentioned, my favourite one, Expose, is the game is complicated. The game is made up of, of 50 complicated or complex decisions. When you play a 90-minute game, you get an average of 50 actions in the game. So, you know, how can we make... The conditions or the rules of the session make them even harder than, than the game so maybe the game becomes easier for them looking at the bottom right every practice you put on is either constant variable or random or on a scale in between that so uh, you know a good example of constant would be um you know just hitting volleys straight at someone's face right i'm going to kick these at you you know where it's going it's coming there every time you don't really have to think you just have to react to you know what's coming Variable would be um, something along the lines of, I'm going to hit some volleys at you, um, but I'm going to change my position every time. And they're going to come either at your feet, your hips or your face. So, so that makes the goalkeeper um, have to respond to some stimulus that comes from you and from your position.
and then random would be um, would basically be the game. You know, random scenarios, random positions, random outcomes of, of shots and situations. You know, recognize recognize where your sessions are. You know, are you a coach that just does constant practices? that tells the goalkeeper where it's going and they just practice the same thing over and over? Or do you get some variable and random in as well? I think goalkeeping as a whole is probably uh, weighted towards that constant um, that constant kind of element of it. And again, really vital that you get a chance to practice some techniques, you know, in, in repeated fashion. Um, but is, is that the only thing you need to be working on or is there some other stuff? Uh, bottom right it, it is three things. So realism, does it look like the game? Is is what you're working on looking like the game that you see on, on a Saturday or a Sunday? Uh, is it relevant? So is it relevant to the player and to the position? So that takes into consideration age, area size, uh, rules, um, you know, other involvement. And then repetition, how many opportunities are you giving them uh, to, to, to practice the things that are important? Okay, so there's the there's the four areas that we've just that we've just gone through. Um, what what I'm going to do now is just show you how this might look or how you might um, how you might work this into your session. So this this isn't a session plan. This is just what 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 we advise and use with our coaches to ask them to consider when putting sessions together. Um, so imagine it as a as like a graphic equalizer uh, when you're turning music up and down and, and getting different different levels of bass and um, different speakers coming out and stuff. So I'm going to give you the example of a, of a goalkeeping camp. So we run we run goalkeeping camps here with England and we invite a group of like 12 goalkeepers in uh, for three days and we work with them on some stuff. So if an under 15 came in for the first time, I just ask you to have a look in the top left corner. We might work really highly on what the individual is, give them a chance to show us what they can do, really try and help them as an individual. We're gonna do we're gonna do literally nothing on the opposition because there is no opposition, and we're gonna do quite a lot on how we want them to play when they're with an England team. Um, over in the top right, um, we're gonna empower them, so we're gonna involve them. They're gonna know what's going on in the session. They're gonna get a chance to express themselves and be involved. Uh, we are gonna inspire them here. You know, it's the first England experience. We want to make a good impression. We want to motivate them. We want to give them that kind of base to work from. And the exposed one's going to be a little bit lower. We want them to, you know, ease their way into the first experience and become more confident um, and, and find out a bit about them. Uh, bottom right, we're not going to do a lot of constant practice. There's going to be loads of variable stuff which will give which will give them a chance to show us how they are as an individual. And there's definitely going to be some random stuff in there to see how they uh, to see how they deal with the with the whole scenario. Uh, bottom left, uh, hopefully they're going to. It can be a challenge repetition-wise to get loads of goes if you're making things variable and random. So we're going to be really conscious of giving people enough goes. Uh, it is going to be realistic um, to some extent, and then the relevance is going to be is going to be really high. We're going to work in the right size goal, the right size area. We're going to put rules on it which make it close to the game. So if I flip that on its head, uh, I'm going to give you an example from like a a match day minus one experience against Italy. So if we're playing Italy tomorrow, this is this is what it might this is how it might differ. So get your eyes to the top left of the screen. We're gonna work nothing on the individual. Um, it's very low on the individual. You know, we've had plenty of work so we know what they're doing. Um, the opposition is going to be really high. So we're gonna really look on how Italy press as a front two or a front three. They press really high or they get loads of crosses in you know we're going to really focus on what the opposition are doing and we're, we're definitely going to touch on how we play uh, so this is how we're going to deal with deal with the situation uh, eyes on top right uh, empowerment's high the player's been involved in the game plan the players had an input into how we're going to play they've had a look at the opposition's clips they've actually suggested certain parts of the session we should try um, the inspire bit's going to be low uh, the reason we're going to be low is you know there's a game against Italy tomorrow, and it's important that the goalkeeper is is it is self-inspiring and is inspiring others. I don't think it's our job a, a day before the game to inspire a player to performance. I think the you know having longevity of being able to self-inspire is is key. The exposed bit, controversially, this one's going to be high. I think a lot of people on a match day minus one 
would have their um would have their session you know really easy a real feel good session uh, make sure the keeper feels good we're gonna we're gonna test them we're gonna make them you know expose them to some of the, the demands that the game's gonna have the day before for it just just jumping on that Go so on. what's your rationale for doing that so what because if you expose them too much within that like, yeah i think that good question so i think that's something that if you went if 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 your match day minus the day before a game at the moment if you uh if you currently give your goalkeeper a feel good session um to then go to the next game and give them a real like exposure session that would probably be too big a jump to go from like a feel good to a, a challenging session so I, so my belief is so that should something that should happen over time. I think sometimes we can create or a, a, an environment is created that's too easy, that's too nice, that's too feel good, and actually the game isn't that. So I think I think we we should put strategies in place to make goalkeepers more adaptable and more and more au fait to be deal with uh, difficult scenarios and, and stressful scenarios. So I think probably dialing that one up, that expose one up over time would be something we'd be keen to do. But I think the question's right that we wouldn't kind of ram it up just for one game. It'd be something that we'd considered. Um, bottom right, again, slightly controversially, we ain't going to do any constant practice. We want them to be um, we want them to be adaptable and ready to deal with situations. The variable stuff's going to be low as well, but the random's going to be high. You know, it's going to, they're going to get... We're going to be putting lots of scenarios where they have to come up with the answers that the game or come up with solutions that the game's going to give them. Bottom left, we're going to give them loads of goes in random situations. They're going to be tested and stretched in, in what Italy are going to do. It's, it's as realistic and as relevant as we can as regards the numbers we've got, as regards the, the interference we're going to get and the the kind of challenges that the session's going to have on it. Um, so yeah, that's a you know I think the best word for this is probably a thinking tool. Um, I don't think it's a session designs, and you know you can probably picture a typical session of yours, and you know where might you fall, where might you be really strong on that you that you've got dialed up, and, and what bits might you not do very much. Um, each one of these kind of equalizers or, or graphs is, is important. Um, and I think it's good to have some variety in every session. Um, I think it's good to be aware of which bits you've got dialed up and which are dialed down, and ask you, you know, are you comfortable with with how your graphic equaliser would look and and how much change that has during sessions and and, and weeks. I suppose linking them together as well. So if you go high on the opposition, you probably get realism and relevance out of that because it looks more like the game and what you're going to face on a yeah on a yeah correct correct. And I think I think probably. Uh, Ramas is um, if if the outcome of the session is for it to be realistic, how do you make it realistic? You probably make it realistic by turning up the random, um, turning up the realism. You know, involving involving the opposition a bit more. That that naturally will make it more realistic. So it goes back to the topic really about aligning your outcomes with the, with the session design. Yeah. Good question. Okay, we're going to move on to some examples now, and uh, I've got I've got a couple of tasks coming up. Hopefully, they're useful for you. Um, so the the session we're going to give you an example of is what we call the four goal game. Uh, we use it on the men's goalkeeping camp. Uh, we use it on the women's one as well. And it, this this game is a real go to session or practice for us. Uh, and what it what it does for us, it gives us a real indication of the goalkeeper's competencies and uh, readiness to play for England. Um, we find this really useful uh, and, and I'm going to share it with you now. So the session looks like this, um, depending on the age and stage of your players, if they're, if they're above age 15, we do this across two 18 yard boxes. Um, so you would, you, you know, the practice would be 36 by 36. Or 36 by 44. You can have one. You can have it a bit wider. Um, there's there's a goalkeeper in each goal. Uh, there's a yellow man in the middle who can also be a goalkeeper. And then there's there's four uh, kind of outfield players in red. Here's the rules or the the outcomes of the session. So from a goalkeeping point of view, 
in possession, it's it focuses around recognizing and exploiting space. So just referencing referencing back to the characteristics, one of our characteristics is around exploiting space in possession. So this is a great uh, opportunity to uh, you know chance to do this. Out of possession, so when you've not got the ball, it's about defending your goal and defending the space between you and the you and the player. Uh, there's definitely some stuff on game management. Uh, so again, managing the game, and there's definitely some stuff on on teamwork and you know how you how you work as a team to score points. Uh, if you're an outfield player in this, so the red team, um, it's working on how you press uh, as a four. It's working on clinical finishing uh, when you get a chance to finish. You know, you know, can you can you take your chances? And it's working on teamwork again, how you work as a team. Uh, here comes the rules. Um, so goalkeepers, um, and this provides motivation and challenge. Goalkeepers, you can score a point by completing eight passes. Okay, what that means is um, if you can play between yourselves, uh, the middleman, and other keepers. Eight times that gets you a point. Okay. If you complete a successful through pass, again, link back to the characteristics, which goes straight to another keeper, like so, must be another keeper, that gets you a point also. So basically, we're looking at support positions, receiving skills, and effective passes to take players out of the game. Uh, to provide motivation for the outfielders, um, if they win the ball cleanly, or the goalkeepers make a mistake, or there's a forced error. Three ball, well, two balls come on, and they get the chance of keeping the ball. They might have won, and they've got three seconds to score when the ball comes on. So you're looking at real clinical play when it's when it gets played in. How quickly are they able to either secure the ball or just finish it first time? Um, they play for 90 seconds, and uh, the winner uh, is is added up at the end over how well they've done. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go on to uh, to look at some footage and, and how this might play out. Um, this session that you're going to see now, I'm going to show you three three 90 second clips. Um, so three different games that go that go different directions, really, um, or not different directions, but different levels of success. So this is where I pitch this session. It's a little bit about the individual. Not a lot about the opposition because they're going to press in all different ways. Uh, definitely a lot around around how we play as a um, as England teams. Um, it does empower the players. We involve them in. Uh, we show them some clips beforehand. You know, we ask them to um, to have an input into how their team play and how they want to combat the session. Inspire is quite low, really. This is a challenging session, so the players will have to inspire themselves. You know, we will help them somewhat, but it will definitely be how they go around inspiring themselves. And the exposed bit is definitely high. This is a tough session. Um, there's some constraints on it that make it difficult. So the exposed bit is, is quite high, and we want to see how they deal with this, uh, you know, stressful situation. Um, it's quite low, constant. They don't get a lot of, lot of rep well, and they don't get every situation is different, so it's not a lot of the same stuff. And the variable and the random is pretty high. Um, the variable is higher than the random due to there only been four opposition players. Uh, repetition, yeah, they get plenty of goals. It's definitely above half halfway. They don't get loads of goals, but they definitely get plenty of opportunity to practice it. It's definitely real. It's definitely relevant. The reason the real and realism, the relevance aren't higher, uh, would be around. You know, we are only on a certain part of the pitch. It is only 44 by 36. There are only four opposition players. Um, so although we are getting some level of realism, uh, we're also missing out on some as well due to, you know, using a smaller area of the pitch. Um, so what I'd like you to do, um, just consider when you're watching these videos, just just reference back the, um, the, the areas you wrote down. So what considerations did you make when designing a session? And what considerations do the players want? And just just look just look for occasions during these drills or exercises where you might see certain parts. Okay, so we're gonna press we're gonna press play in a minute uh, or in, in very shortly. And I want you to look at uh, the areas that I've selected. What player outcomes were there, and what what coach outcomes were there? Can I talk over this? Yes. Okay, let's play. So the, the, blues are, the Blues are in possession. 
um, and it's up to them to keep the ball. So have a look at how the yellows are trying to press. You know, what level of risk are the blues taking? What type of passes are they getting? What, how do they react to a mistake if and when a mistake comes? Does it look like the game? Does it look difficult? Mistake, repositioning from all keepers, extra balls come on, there's a goal at the end. So a real element of transition in that as well. Play restarts. They have to recover from the mistakes that they made. They probably have to relax a bit more now because everything was tense a second ago when they were out of possession. Look at the behaviour of the coaches that you can see, you know, very relaxed coaching positions, very much supporting, not getting involved too much. Keeping an eye on the score. And eventually the Blues, I'd say, have got on top of the yellows in this first practice. Giving it away again. Reaction from all four keepers. This guy closest to us has reacted late. Ends up getting chipped. Okay, so just just just, just as a start, I've, I've talked through quite a bit there. So it looked it looked quite a good start. Do you play that again? Yeah, it's probably again. Okay, it looked it looked quite a good start, um, but they did come two or three errors that provided the keepers with opportunities to then come up with a solution. Um, you know, let's see how we get on video two. Start video two. So video two starts. Just pause it there, Ramos. Yeah. So just link to the empowerment one. What you can see, what you can see here at the beginning of video two, is um, is the is the four keepers in the middle of the pitch. Um, so they're coming up with a strategy um, to how they're going to press. So the four keepers are working out how to stop the four oranges or the five oranges. So have a look and see what they come up with. You can see just in the kind of middle right corner, one of the coaches just stood with the goalkeeper, just having a chat, you know, just relaxed. Um, you know, this is about the players and how they react or respond. Okay, let's play the video. There we go, and we're off. So have a look Look at the blues. So they look like they've gone like a flat three with a guy dropped off at the back. So they're really trying to stop them getting it across. Struggle straight away from the oranges. All goalkeepers react. Bit slow bringing the balls on, and we've conceded two goals to start with. So that's a disaster start. Let's see how they react. Again, given away. So you've just made a mistake. How do you then not make a mistake again? Another two balls come on. Another goal conceded. So how are the Oranges going to deal with this, this adversity that they've got now? They haven't started well. They've conceded three goals. They've now conceded four goals. Massive mistakes. Tough situations. Conceded five goals already. They haven't scored themselves yet. Just pause there, please. So this would be really easy now. Uh, you can see the two coaches down near the goal. There's two coaches just stood there. This would be really easy now for one of these coaches to go and interfere and to go and um, you know, give the goalkeepers loads of answers, tell them it's all gonna be all right, um, give them, you know, give them loads of detail. And actually, what we're looking for here is we've got four or five keepers who might struggle a little bit. You know, who's going to start talking? Who's going to show leadership? Who's going to communicate? Who's going to persevere with playing the right way? Carry on playing. So when your sessions are going bad, you can learn some stuff there as well. Right, now we've got it going. We've had a good in-two pass there. Are they giving it away again? Sorry, commentating on the wrong thing. Now they're playing again. So can they get some success now? Can they just get eight passes? Get themselves back into the game. Long ball. Mistake again. How do they react to the mistake? Great saves this time. So mistakes can lead to great saves. 
Okay, so just on that video, uh, we're going to move on to the next one, and we're going to see um, we're going to see what happens when when a team might get into some kind of flow and quality with, with how they play. Go runners. Okay, so we've got the yellows in goal now. It looks like they're trying to man mark the middleman here. If you look at the middleman running round, he's getting man marked. So the yellows have to stay on the ball here. Look at this guy just staying on the ball. Loads of patience, waiting for someone to press. When someone presses, that's the trigger when they can go. This time they gave it away. So it might have been a good decision. Might have been a good decision, but there you go. Decisions, bad decisions lead to chances to make saves on transition. Again, how are they going to come up with the solution at the mark in the middle, man? Brilliant through pass, eliminated three players. Middleman creates space. Yellows stay patient on the ball. Sometimes you might need an escape technique to take on an attacker. Not all the time, but sometimes. Great touch. Eliminating players again. Really got the oranges on the run. So in the three videos there, you know, you've seen you've seen a number of different things. You've seen three different ways where people pressure in different manners. So they might press you with three. They might stay on the middle player. You've seen people struggling. So you've seen people coming up with mistakes or sorry, making mistakes. How do they react to the mistakes? Are they positive? Have they got nerve strength? Can they bounce back? Um, are they able to come up with a unique save? Back on my screen now. Are they able to come up with a unique save? And, and, and you, in, at that moment as a coach, have got to provide support in that situation. And then the last time is like, what happens when it's going well? So when the players were, you know, being successful, you know, do they start taking uh, taking unnecessary risks? Uh, do they keep it simple all the time? You know, when things are going well, do we get do we get carried away with ourselves? Okay, I know that's something where you speak about on the A license. That uh, do we rescue players too early? Good, yeah, good analogy. Um, sort of celebrate success too quick, and it's that balance yeah. of actually the game's tough, so. You have to have that balance of preparing. Yeah, that. that's a good point. That and, and that probably goes back to the planning as regards like when you when you're planning that session, then then them exercises are, are are ninety minute games. Sorry, ninety second games. So if you set a time limit of ninety seconds, let them play for ninety seconds because it might go really well, it might go really bad. But when it's going well and when it's going bad, different things happen. And you know, one of our one of the skills of a coach is to observe what's going on and then then help or, or support as we need, need to be. So, you know, don't worry if they're struggling. Um, yeah, it is. there is a time to rescue a player, but there's also a time to, you know, let them struggle and see how they get out of it. Um, so a little bit of time to review and reflect, really. Um, hopefully we've, we've asked, you know, we've got some questions out there. Um, some of you are probably thinking, I wouldn't get that kind of space. I wouldn't have outfield players. Uh, I wouldn't have eight goalkeepers, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That that's just an example of a practice I've given you. You can do the same practice with three goals and one player in the middle. Um, you know, two goals um, with with side men and two players in the middle. There's loads of different variations you can get to get some directional possession, some support play, some transition. Um, you can join in yourself. Uh, maybe you're in a position where you can actually get outfield players. Outfield players love that. Um, we actually use outfield players in that practice the next day that, that cranks up the pressure and really exposes them to making mistakes and taking risks. Um, so, you know, come up with your creative way around, you know, how you best use your space there. So so what, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to flip flick on to the next, um, the next slide, if, if I may. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go back to a slide first. Just bear with me. Um, so if you think about the session that you've just seen, let's just flash these words back up. So when 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 I or we were planning um, for that them sessions, you know, the opposition was taken into account because we had some. You know, we we actually used some opposition. There was there was four players there trying to stop play. Um, did we think about the indiv individual needs of the players? Probably not too much. That probably came came into that kind of one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, did we think about load? Yeah. 
uh, 90 seconds doing that is tough. So you know, keeping the load any any lower any higher than that would be would be uh, would not be advisable. Uh, time uh, that takes quite a long time that session. Um, and what I mean by that is you need to give them time to work in a team of four. You need to give them time to talk. They need rest. You need to coach. You know that takes quite a lot of time. So um, you, you know you need to allot kind of 45 minutes or something like that. Uh, periodization uh, hard for me to say that would have been a goalkeeping camp outfield link definitely you know our goalkeepers in games and training are definitely put under high pressure so you know if they if they practice that and then went over with the team i think they'd be they'd be they'd be ready to jump into that scenario space and area you know i've used an eight two 18 yard boxes there would i do the same thing if i had less space 100 percent um, the decisions are different, the decisions are quicker, the spaces are smaller. It makes it more challenging, but it makes it less realistic. So, um, you know, when you get a chance to use bigger spaces, you know, use them, make it look like the game. And competition, 100%. You know, we, we had three teams there. We had yellows, blues and oranges. Um, did we? Yeah, three teams. You know, there was a competition on it. After every round, we gave an update of the score. You know, orange is 12, blues are nine, uh, yellows are in the lead with 14. So we we kept competition all the way, which which created motivation and created created pressure as well. And then never think about, you know, how the players felt in that. Think about what they looked for in sessions. Was the stuff on correction? Probably not. That would have been an individual one. Uh, psych challenge, 100%. You know, you, you looked at that middle group, really struggled or really made some errors in that. You know, how did they respond and react to that? Uh, was it realistic? I think so. Um, are you always going to be under pressure when you have distribution? No. Is it always going to be right on top of you? No. But are there situations where, you you know, you have to come up with them real um, tight decisions? Yeah. Uh, you know, really key. Uh, what's in it for me? Um, I think I think that, that session's quite generic. So, you know, if you were in that, you're getting support play, you're getting receiving skills, you're getting a range of passing, you're getting transition, you're getting 1v1 saves, reaction saves. There's lots, lots and lots that come out of that, loads of returns for all the players. Is it fun? Uh, yeah, it, it is fun. Um, but I think you make it fun yourself, um, depending how successful you are in it. If you beat yourself up in that session and you know dwell on your mistakes and let your mistakes affect you, uh, you know, I think you can end up not having too much fun in there. So you have to have to probably self motivate. And I think, as you saw, there's quite a lot of two there's quite a lot of two way in there with the, the coaches speaking to the players and um, you know coming up with with giving us some of their ideas. Um, just before we wrap up, Ramas, have you got any questions before I move on? Yeah, so I, I guess the I guess the challenge is obviously linking everything together and knowing yeah. where it fits in your program and why. Yeah. So go on, was that a question or a statement? Yeah, so I'm just, I'm just trying to make sense of obviously how you, you make that assessment before you see your goalkeepers. So if you've got a new group. Oh, okay, goalkeepers. yeah. Well, I think, uh, yeah, it's a good question. So if you've got a new group of goalkeepers, I think that would be what do you want the session, what's the outcome you want the session to be. So if you want the session to be fun, if you want them to feel good, if you want to challenge them, you know, that would then in turn um, inform you how hard you made the session physically or mentally. Uh, so I think I think making sure you're clear on your outcome can then can then help you know the rules and the the, the way you design your session there. Anything else before I move on? And I, I guess the big the big challenge is goalkeepers making mistakes and it being last line of defence highlighted more yeah, as, yeah. as little to prepare. So how do you how do you prepare your goalkeepers for what is going to invariably happen? at some point in there yeah well, i guess it's like it'd be really easy to put that session on with like one or two players in the middle where they get loads of success and loads of space and less time or more time and stuff so uh, i think probably play around with that you know in your sessions play around with the with with situations where it's really hard for the keepers and they're under quite a lot of stress and then when they get a lot of success um, and, and just be just be supportive to the keepers that when that, that's taking place, you're giving them the right feedback. You're giving them some some detail about how they might do better. Um, so I don't think it's always that hard, and I don't think it's always that easy. It's about you know moving that moving that kind of like graphic equalizer up and down all the time around, stressing them and not stressing them. So 
Yeah? Yeah, wonderful. Okay, cool. So four things for me to think about. Um, you know, think about what outcomes you want from your session and then make sure the design of your practice match up with the outcomes. And what I mean by that is if you want the session to feel good, make sure the design of it does that. If you want it to be stressful, make sure it puts them in some stressful situations. Have scoring systems, because what that does in the game, there'll be times in the game when you're winning, there'll be times when you're losing, and there'll be times when you're drawing, no, winning, drawing, losing. So at any one time, how does that affect the behavior? Do you take more risk? Do you take less risk? Do you feel the pressure more? Do you feel the pressure less? Scoring systems create opportunity and create pressure. And that gives you a chance to coach and find out more about your keepers. Um, triggers and cues. What I mean by that is, as often as you can, use triggers and cues that you'd find in the game. So if there's in the four goal game that we've just seen there, when the striker is running at the goal, goalkeeper, that's a really a realistic trigger of someone's running at me really fast. I need to take a good touch or play a good pass here. Um, if you just pass the ball at the goalkeeper, They've got no triggers to pick up, so they can do what they want. So use triggers and cues that happen in the game. Um, the last one I just want to leave you on is, is stuff around your influence. Um, us as coaches influence young players and players more than you will ever remember or that you will ever know. Um, when you think back to how you were coached as a player, I, I, I'm going to make a big assumption here that you can't remember every drill or all the detail that you were told. What you can remember, you can remember how your coach made you feel at that time, you know, what situations he put you in, what level of support he gave you, how he made you feel, how he motivated you, uh, how he gave you confidence. That's what he can do, or that's what, uh, that's what you can do for your players. So consider how you want your players to be, what influence you want to have on the goalkeepers that you work with and make sure your behaviour kind of aligns with that. Um, just to wrap up, so I think we're bang on, bang on an hour now. Um, hopefully, there's plenty for you to take away and think about. Uh, we've definitely had a look into some stuff. Uh, you know, we've definitely got a bit geeky around some of the goalkeeping bits and the detail. I think we had one laugh, only one though, which is all right. Um, I've got the I've got the thinking face there, ready for you to say, right, what 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 bits of this do I add to my game, to my coaching? What does this mean to me? Think, I, I believe one of the biggest skills as a coach is to be curious and, and to, to remain curious as long as you can. Um, take some notes, write down some ideas. Uh, I hope it's been of use and um, thank you for logging in. Uh, if, if there are any questions off the back of this, please feel free to contact me. Uh, you, you'll get me on Twitter uh, and then and I'm sure there's an, an email link with the FA where you can fire anything else back in. But yeah, thanks for logging in and um, see you again soon. Bye bye. I'd just like to pay my thanks, obviously, for you taking your time to, to re-record it and share your expertise with them. Thank you. Welcome. Cheers, bro.